TBRs are made, but do TBRs happen? That is the bigger question. Just the tip. You don't know you're weird until someone tells you you're weird. Well, hello, my beautiful bookish friends, and welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you are new here. My name is Lori Beth, and today is such a fun video for me to do with you guys. One of my favorite videos to do, actually, which is quite literally what I say every time I turn the camera on to record. No shame in my game. It is my unboxing video, and I am going to also do a little mini book haul of some books that I have picked up recently. It has been a minute since I have been able to do an unboxing video. Again, recording schedule was kind of wacky and kind of weird for a little while. So we are going to go over technically today two months of Owl Crate, one month of Book of the Month, and then my little mini book haul from some online shopping that I did at Waterstones and from my local bookstore as well. If you have not watched one of my unboxing videos before, what I like to do is open each box individually and then go over the theme from that box. So whatever the theme for that month was, we will read through it and then I will read through the synopsis of the book and show you all the details of the special edition from the subscription box that it came in. As for the book haul, I am going to keep those kind of short and sweet Sweet. just briefly go over the synopsis of each book or maybe why I chose to pick up that book so that way we can keep things moving smoothly. So with that being said, we do have quite a few books to go over per usual, so we are gonna go ahead and jump right in. So I already have an order laid out of how I would like to do everything. I am going to timestamp everything down below so that you can jump around if you would like to do so. Starting first and foremost with my book haul from my local bookstore and our first book of the video, which is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I have never read this book before. I have seen the movie multiple, multiple times and absolutely adored it. Of course, I love anything that Tim Burton touches. I just can't help it. I'm that classic spooky season girly. And when I saw this copy at my local bookstore, I thought, what better time than now to pick this up and read it because Halloween is among us. The synopsis of this story, if you don't know what Coraline is about, when Coraline steps through a door to find another house strangely similar to her own, only better, things seem marvelous. But there's another mother there, another father, and they want her to stay and be their little girl. They want to change her and never let her go. Coraline will have to fight with all her wits and courage if she is to save herself and return to her ordinary family. This is just such a fun story and kind of a... I don't know if you can call it a coming of age story, but it's just really sweet to watch Coraline, this young girl who falls into like this fantasy world and thinks that the grass is greener. She's going to find something better, more joyous on this other side. And she quickly learns that the family and the life that she had was what she's wanted all along. It's very sweet. And again, a little bit of that creepy, like spooky season atmosphere to it as well and I'm really excited to finally read this physically as opposed to just watching it for the hundredth time uh, which I will also probably do this year. And next up still from my local bookstore is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and can we talk about this cover? How cool is that? Again, saw it at the bookstore and saw on the cover that it says specifically on here, the 1818 text. Because if you do not know, Frankenstein, or the story that we so know of Frankenstein, is actually an edited version of the original text that Mary Shelley had created when she first came up with the story. So I think we all know the synopsis of Frankenstein, but I want to read the back of the book here so that you can get a better idea of why it's cool to stumble upon an unedited version of this story. Penguin Classic has published the original 1818 text, which preserves the hard-hitting and politically charged aspects of Shelley's original writing, with its strong female voice and unflinching wit. Emphasizing Shelley's relationship with her mother, trailblazing feminist Mary Wollstonecraft penned a vindication of the rights of woman, Frankenstein, the 1818 text demonstrates her commitment to carrying forward her mother's ideals and places her in the context of a feminist legacy rather than the sole female in a company of male poets, including Percy Shelley and Lord Byron. So there you have it, the original text written by Mary Shelley herself, who was born and raised and grown by another feminist woman. I just love the story of Frankenstein in general because, again, it's perfect for, like, that Halloween creepy vibe. Um, Dr. Frankenstein literally bringing back someone to life in his laboratory. 
It's just such a fun story. I've always really liked that story itself. But when I saw this unedited version from most of the versions that we see out there on the shelves, I wanted to grab this and read this um, for this Halloween season and kind of just look at it from a different angle, you know? All right, moving on, I do have a few books that I ordered online from Waterstones. I am in the U.S., so I shop primarily at U.S. bookstores, like the big names that we know, but a lot of local bookstores as well. And sometimes I just love the covers that come from Waterstones or from overseas. I just prefer them. I think they're beautiful. I will be the first to admit that I am a sucker for a good cover, which is why I also have a few subscription boxes as well. It's just my thing. I love them. I love displaying books. I just love beautiful, beautiful covers. And these ones are no exception to that. So first up on my list from Waterstones is Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. I've never read anything by Liz Nugent before, but I was so drawn to the synopsis of this. And then also the cover from Waterstones as well, because I just loved this lime green. I love her dress. I love this kind of almost Wednesday Adams vibe she's giving on the cover, and it's called Strange Sally Diamond. With that being said, let's read through the synopsis together. Sally Diamond cannot understand why what she did was so strange. She was only doing what her father told her to do, to put him out with the rubbish when he died. Now Sally is the center of attention, not only for the hungry media and police detectives, but there is also a sinister voice from a past she cannot remember. As she begins to discover the horrors of her childhood, Sally steps into the world for the first time, making new friends and big decisions, and learning that people don't always mean what they say. But who is the man observing Sally from the other side of the world? And why does her new neighbor seem to be so obsessed with her? Sally's trust issues are about to be severely challenged. The reviews for this book online are glowing, like out of this world. It talks, most people talk about how this is not just a psychological thriller, so something very good to read as we're coming into like the autumn vibes outside, but it really dives into the human psyche. Why do we do what we do as humans? Or why do we do certain things because of maybe the environments that we grew up in? It sounded very gripping and I was really kind of compelled to read this, not just because of the time of year that we're coming into, but because it's like, you don't know what you don't know, right? Like you don't know you're weird until someone tells you you're weird. Like we don't have ideas in our head until someone puts them there. And I think this is gonna be a really cool look into, again, that human psyche. So it's gonna be more than just a psychological thriller. It's gonna be just more about human nature. I'm kind of into that. Okay. <sighs> Last but not least from Waterstones is one of my most anticipated reads of this year. Wisteria by Adeline Grace. And look at the cover. Look how beautiful. Oh, I mean, the U.S. colors are really pretty too, but I love this kind of earthy gothic vibe that comes through on these Waterstones covers. There's more, more of the foliage, more of the animals that are kind of involved with the story. And that's what really drew me to the covers from Waterstones in general. This is the third book in the Belladonna series. I, well, Belladonna is the first book. I don't know technically like this series has a name to it. I should probably know that. But Wisteria is the third book. And full disclosure, I have already started this book and I am almost already done with it because I cannot put this book down. It might, it's like already in contention for Belladonna, the first one, but I'm not going to go too much into my thoughts and feelings on it because this will be in a wrap up shortly, but we are going to read the synopsis together. Blythe Hawthorne has never let anyone tell her what to do. Not society, not her overprotective father, and certainly not the man she's bound herself to, no matter how rude and insufferable he is. In fact, she's determined to be a thorn in his side for the rest of her days, even as he ensures that her new life in his palace is anything but a fairy tale. But as Blythe discovers a new side to herself that links her to his past, she'll have to ask herself if she's willing to let an unexpected spark ignite, and if she's willing to discover the truth about her past. It's romantic. It's gothic. It's perfect for the fall. I love these books that are set in kind of that Jane Austen, like Bridgerton era, but have this air of poisons and poisonous plants and the earth and elements and like 
flora and fauna. It's it's beautiful. It's delicious. And if you're looking for a great series to read for the fall time, I have already mentioned this in my previous video, my fall recommendations. I'll link that down below. But this one so far has not disappointed. It is so, so beautiful. All right, so we are done with our mini book haul and we are going to move on to our subscription boxes. This is not meant to be confusing, but it is going to be a little bit wonky because I did miss an unboxing from last month. And book of the month, which is what we are going to start with, is always the current month while my other subscription boxes are usually a month behind um, just because of when they ship and they do come from overseas. So we are going to start with that book of the month box. And this is book of the month from September. Beautiful book of the month box that everybody knows, everybody loves. As I've said in previous videos, this box is so recognizable that I have seen them sitting on people's porches. And I'm not gonna lie, I've thought to myself before, what would happen if I just took that? Would anyone ever know? It probably says a lot about my personality. So we are going to go ahead and crack this open. You know I love to use a sharp object on camera, because why not? Why wouldn't I? That could never go wrong. Let's see what we got. Oh. This is cool. What is this that came in the box? Volume zero. A spell for disappearing. What? Did this come with like a mini short story that I don't know about? <gasps> well played, book of the month. Well played. Okay. I didn't know that they did this. Or maybe this is like an early release. I, I'm sorry, I don't know this story, but how cool is that? Ooh, ooh. Love it when people can take me by surprise. And Book of the Month, you are doing a great job at that. So the book that I chose for my September box is Mad Woman by Chelsea Biker. And Baker Biker, I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name, so I apologize about that. But look at how beautiful this cover is. And per usual, we have our book of the month emblem. We got it on the corner, got it on the spine. This is probably like my favorite thing ever because I am already starting to collect my book of the month. I have them on their own shelf and there is something so beautiful and satisfying about seeing that book of the month emblem like lined up like on a shelf. Oh, I don't know. It's beautiful. I love the aesthetic. I love the aesthetic. And how many times can I chef's kiss in one video? <laughs> to be determined on that. All right, so let's go over the synopsis of this story together. Clove has gone to extremes to keep her past a secret. Thanks to her lies, she's landed the life of her dreams, complete with a safe husband and two adoring children who will never know the terror that was routine in her childhood. If her buried anxiety threatens to breach the surface, Clove, if that is really her name, focuses on finding the right supplement, the right gratitude meditation. But when she receives a letter from a woman's prison in California, her past comes screeching into the present, entangling her in a dangerous game with memory and the people she thought she had outrun. As the story races between her precarious present-day life in Portland, Oregon, and her childhood in a Waikiki high-rise with her mother and father, Clove is forced to finally unravel the defining day of her life. How did she survive that day, and what will it take to end the cycle of violence? Will the truth undo her, or could it ultimately save her? Thank you again for dramatic synopsis readings of books. So I was very drawn to this story for a few different reasons because it kind of is that verge of somewhat of a thriller, but more than that, almost kind of a family drama. As I've mentioned in some of my videos recently, I've been very drawn to family stories, um, family dynamics, or dramas within families. There's just something that I'm finding very appealing about them. And I think they can traditionally walk that line of psychological thrillers because of that dynamic, right? There's there's something to be said about the environments that we're raised in, the families that we're surrounded by, that we don't often have a choice to be surrounded by, and what can happen if you run from those things and 
if they catch up with you. It sounded like it was going to be a really cool book of discovery, of kind of facing things from the past, but again, kind of verging on that um, psychological thriller, possibly, um, but family drama nonetheless. This one has also glowing reviews online, so I'm really, really excited to get to this one. I'm thinking maybe October, but it might have to go into November. We shall see. I've kind of got a whole fall TBR planned out for myself, but TBRs are made, but do TBRs happen? That is the bigger question. All right, everybody, stay calm. We are moving on to the Owl Crate subscription boxes. This is going to be the last subscription box that we have for this video because of me either changing some subscriptions I've already had or skipping subscriptions for the last few months. So Owlcrate is going to bring us in for a landing, but do not fret. We have two months of Owlcrate to go over. So we are going to start with our very first one. Success. Cracking into the first Owl Crate box. And this is going to be the Owl Crate July Adult Fantasy. And the theme for this month was A Sweet Escape. Look how pretty that is. Oh, again, with the foliage. I love me some plants and flowers. I'm a sucker for it every time. All right, so let's go over the details of this book. So A Sweet Escape is The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. In the spell shop, we meet Kyla, a librarian at the Great Library of Elysium, who spends her days with her sentient spider plant, Kez, sequestered among the Empire's precious spell books and protecting the elite's magic. When the library goes up in flames and revolution is among them, she runs back to the island she grew up in. Kyla is faced with a nosy yet handsome neighbor in a town where the power is being drained by the very empire she worked for. Risking everything by opening her own secret spell shop in town, Kyla is determined to make things right. This exclusive edition will feature the following customizations, exclusive redesigned dust jacket, reversible dust jacket, printed artwork hardcover, end pages, stenciled edges, ribbon bookmark. I love a ribbon bookmark. It's such a small, simple, beautiful thing to have in a book, and I always appreciate it. Signed by the author, oh, author letter bound into the book and bonus content bound into the book as well. Also, there is the Sweet Escape playlist. Such a cool touch that Owl Crate does in my opinion, that playlist that they add on the back of all of their um, description cards. I think it's such a cool touch. I don't know, I, I kind of like geek out about it every single time. If you're a very ambient person, if you like ambient settings when you're reading, the playlists are really cool because you can put those on in the background, light yourself a little candle, and enjoy the book. All right, so let's go ahead and crack this box back open. Okay, ooh, this is so pretty. Very gently. Just the tip. All right. Let's get this cover removed. Oh boy, this is so pretty. And the spell shop, look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is kind of probably hard to see, but the foiling on the spine, look how shiny and beautiful. Again, with these plants. Look at these little kitty cats at the top. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. There's animals. I like that there's plants and flowers and berries and it's so pretty and okay. Stenciled edges are also vines. In love. I love it so beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and look at this reversible dust jacket because you know your girl loves a reversible dust jacket. This is giving me like all of the end of the summer witchy cottagecore vibes that I love to see. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. I love it. Stunning jam shop. Oh, 
I can't wait to read this. This sounds so cute, like very sweet, very charming. A girl changing her mind, changing her opinion, I always love. She was over here working for these people and now she's over here stopping these people from draining the magic in this new place that she's living. I, it's, it's cozy, it's, it's heartwarming, I love it. And what I love more is this naked book. Get out of here. Look at all of the pictures, the books, the jams, the cactus. Oh, it's so cute. I love that. It's the same on the back too, but there you go. All right, let's check out these end pages. My gosh. We love a girl who reads. Look at that. Get a little closer here so you can see. Let's check the back. <laughs> okay. Surprise, surprise. I haven't even really gone into the romance that I know is going to ensue in this story clearly from her annoying neighbor. I love how it very specifically says in the synopsis, she has this uh, like meddlesome, annoying neighbor that you know she is going to fall head over heels for. It's a trope that I will fall for time and time again. Oh my gosh. This is really pretty. I love that. I think this is going to be perfect. If I can squeeze this in in September, again, kind of like that end of summer cottage core. That's what it's giving me. I really, really like this. I also love an author letter. I think that they're very heartwarming most of the time. I mean, someone put so much thought and work into the story that you're holding in your hands. It's the thing about reading and reading so frequently is I think we lose sight of these books were someone's work of art. These books were someone's like heart and soul. You know what I mean? Um, and when I have these special editions that come with something like an author letter, I usually take the time to read it. And signed book, boop, boop, boop. Also talked about how having a signed book is one of my most prized possessions. This could be a flappy paperback with ripped edges and a broken binding that I have found in a resale shop. But if it had an author signature in it, I would consider it one of the best items that I had on my shelves. Um, this is stunning. I love this. I love this vibe. All right, let's go ahead and get this beauty back into her little dust jacket and back in her box. And we are going to move forward to our next owl crate box. All right, shift things around here a little bit. Got my next box, got my sharp object, and we are going to Jump right in. All right, so the Owl Crate August adult fantasy theme is Bound by Magic. Look at the colors on this card. Gradient, so pretty. And Bound by Magic is A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. I love T. Kingfisher so much. Big fan of their work. Always have been, always will be. And perfect, again, for autumnal vibes. I am here for it. So, Cordelia knows her mother has secrets. All her life, Cordelia has been kept away from the rest of the world. The only time she's truly free is when she rides her mother's peculiar white horse. When a suspicious death occurs in their little town, Cordelia's mother whisks them away in the dead of night, upending Cordelia's life. Her mother has plans, though. Scheming and plotting to marry into wealth, the woman relentlessly pursues her new beau, leaving a trail of destruction in her wake. This exclusive edition will feature the following customizations. Exclusive redesigned dust jacket, reversible dust jacket, foiled hardcover case, end pages, stenciled edges, ribbon bookmark, digital author signature, author letter bound into book, and bonus content bound into book. And again, we have the Bound by Magic playlist included on the back here. And I am so excited to crack this one open. I don't even, I haven't even looked at spoilers of this one, so I don't even know what it looks like. And I am beyond thrilled. All right, so let's scooch things over a little bit here. 
I love it already. I love it already. Okay. Be cool, Brie. Be cool. I present you a sorceress comes to call. <gasps> also, what was that noise I just made? Was that human? Look at this. Oh my gosh. That gradient color at the top again and that foiling on the stars in the title and along our spine. And this beautiful back. Holy cannoli. I am in love. Already in love. Okay, let's go ahead and crack this open and check out our reversible dust jacket. Another Jane Austen Bridgerton vibe coming from these pictures. I love to see it. Love it. That is stunning. Oof. This is so intriguing. So intriguing. Again, I love T. Kingfisher. They have this beautiful way of writing the, like, the most quirky stories you have ever read, but also the most likable characters somehow. So I'm really curious to see how this one will play out with um one of the characters very clearly being kind of a and some of our other characters having to deal with the ramifications of that person's choices. That should be interesting. Um, but again, her stories are always very weird, very quirky. She has just a very cool writing style, different from anyone I've probably ever read before. And can we talk about this for a minute? Look at all that. Oh my gosh. I actually really like the size of this book. It's a little bit smaller. Makes it feel really comfortable. As a hardcover. Why don't we make smaller hardcovers like this more often? You know what I mean? Like, it feels much more enjoyable to hold than something, like, super large. <laughs> My gosh, this is so beautiful. Okay, let's read what this says. On regents, their uses, and the alchemical work that may be done with them. Interesting. Okay. Ooh, great chaos is unleashed when a sorcerer dies. This is so interesting. Ooh, this is a really cool sprayed edge. Look at the detail on this. I'm going to try to get as close as I can and see if it will focus, but there's geese, moths, butterflies. Like, there's so much detail on this sprayed edge. It's kind of hard to even see zoomed in on camera. Oh my god. All right, let's check out these end papers. Does she not look like a character you're just going to fall in love with? Oh my gosh. That's so cute. Ooh, magic being performed. I like it. I love it. Go inside here and check out our author letter. This is so cool. And her signature in there as well. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I love it. This is going to be so fun for my fall TBR. I will have a video coming out going into more detail about what I plan to read for the fall, um, but this is on my list. I think I have this in October currently, but again, as we know, life happens. So we will see where this one ends up falling, but it will be this autumn for sure because I cannot get enough of this author's writing personally. All right, let's go ahead and put this beauty back. Well, there you have it, my friends. That is my latest subscription box unboxing video. Everything I've gotten from the month of July through September, plus a mini book haul of some really exciting, fun books that are on my fall TBR. With that being said, I would love to know if you have read any of the books that we talked about in today's video and what your thoughts and opinions on those books were, or do you have any subscription boxes? What did you get in the last few months in your subscription boxes? Drop those in a comment down below too. I'm always, you know, I'm always looking out eyes out all the time for anything that I could add to my future list of subscriptions for myself. As always, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button because it always helps a girl out. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my other upcoming videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. As always, it has been an absolute blast and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.